गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन इट्स इट्स अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट प्रिविलेज एंड ऑनर टू वेलकम डॉक्टर डी वी पाठक मिस्टर अविनाश अवाटे अदर फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स एंड माई फेलो इंटर्न्स फॉर दिस प्रेजेंटेशन ग्राफिकल इंटरप्रेटर बुद्धुरम डम्बो इन एक्शन अवर प्रोजेक्ट इज जॉन अंडर एक शिक्षा इनिशिएटिव अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ डॉक्टर डी वी पाठक एंड मिस्टर अविनाश अवाटे हेयर आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई टीम मेम्बर्स श्री वत्सन शिवा मैसेल अभिषेक आदित्य अंकुर बासव अश्विनी इज नॉट हेयर दिव्या हर्षिता नवीन एंड शोभित नाउ एस यू वी अ सेइंग गोज सींग इज बेटर देन हेयरिंग सो आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू अ स्मॉल डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन अबाउट अवर प्रोजेक्ट so i call her divya to start the demonstration good evening everyone now let's have a small and quick demo about our project here we can see we have two windows first is a framework and second is a graphical framework the code of c is written in the first framework and the execution can be seen in the second window let's have a small example we'll open a file and we have already created some demo and we are opening that file okay now it's open the first thing we do is do the pass the c code into a queue now we'll pass it and execute each instruction step by step the first instruction executed and it's shown on the display area of the graphical team the first is int g equals to 4 So first thing that we'll do is to label a box with G. Next, it will go back to a display, get edge from a display, and label the second box. Now what it will do? It gra it grabs four, that's the value of G, and put it into the box of G. Now it has to calculate the value of edge. So initially it has to get the value of G. takes it put it in, it in register 1 that's r1 takes the value from the display as 1 keeps in register 2 and now it if ev evaluates the value of h that's 4 plus 1 that's 5 now it will keep this value to the box of h now the second instruction will be passed that's float h is equal f is equals to h into 0.3 so f will be labeled now it has to be calculated so for initially take the value of h 5 from the box to the register 1 then again come back take the value 0.3 from the display put it to re register 2 and again evaluate the value of f So now this 1.5 will be placed in the box of f. And this completes the execution execution. Now the details of each framework and all the modules will be given. I'll call Shivatsan to give the details. Good evening everyone. Uh this project is intended as a learning tool. That is uh, it is meant to teach uh, students programming. This is not for you know students who have uh, for in uh, colleges. This is intended for students who are first being introduced to uh, programming. So like 11th and 10th standard students. Uh, so these students when they start learning programming, they usually they usually just taught the rules. Even in my school, they started off with this is the uh, this is the C language. These are the literals. These are the strings. These are variables. These are the rules you have to follow. And that is what they told me. That is how they taught programming at school. And this is uh, an initiative by Ekshisha to change the way that happens. For a programmer to be good, I mean, anybody can learn rules, and by repeated practice, they can become very good programmers. But do you really want to enjoy the subject? Do you want to know how it actually happens in a computer? Only when you you know learn that first, you will get an interest in that. You will get an interest in learning computer architecture and improving the ways it is happening. So, uh, with that in mind, we started this project. the uh, objective of this project is the graphical explanation of a memory architecture that is uh, that is what we are representing by those boxes uh, their memory locations 
to explain the back end of programming. That is, uh, you know, to show the accumulator, to show the registers, and how addition and subtraction happens. And it is also intended as a learning tool. That is, this is just a first step. Uh, with added functionality, this can be a standalone uh, learning tool. Uh, the scope of this project, that is, so far what we have implemented is initialization, arithmetic operation, and typecasting support. We've also had some work done on loop and control structures. And uh, we'll go on to the, uh, I mean, uh, those are yet to be implemented. We'll move on to the features of this project. First is the modularity. When we first came here, when we first started this project, none of us, we all knew what theoretically what modularity was. But uh, only when we started implemented, uh, implementing this project, we understood it completely. That is, any part of this project can be replaced by some other, pro, uh, some other part without affecting other parts. So uh, for this, uh, we have a modular code, framework separately, the parser separately, the graphics separately. So and uh, uh, because of this modularity, we'll be, we believe that we'll be able to provide support for any other programming language, say Pascal or basic, and uh, probably not Java, but I think we, that is also possible. And we have a panelized framework, and we have a partial interpreter that uh, interprets single lines and gives you an uh, uh, intermediate code that will be executed by the graphics. And our graphics platform is, of course, supported across different platforms, Linux, Windows, and uh, Android. Uh, the uh, project basically has uh, four main modules. The framework, which has been implemented in Java Swing for desktop applications. The parser, which is a hard-coded uh, parser that is, it has a certain number of files that we have created uh, for this purpose. And uh, there's a GVM which generates the intermediate code. That is, you know, it takes the intermediate code and executes the graphics. The graphics part has been implemented using Blender and LibGDX. The uh, choice of Blender and LibGDX is because of the cross-platform support. Uh, this is the activity flow diagram of this project. Uh, I would so, like Abhishek to explain it. So here you can see the activity flow diagram. Here the user went switch on the application. It has two options, whether to take the input from a file or to use it or to type the instructions manually. When the user takes the file and when the file gets opened, all the data gets shown in the view panel. And after that, that data is passed to the intermediate, to the parser. When the user presses the execute button, the, that data is passed to the parser and, and then the Func that it, start, it starts getting executed and it generates intermediate code and when the intermediate code ge ca gets generated it is then passed in a queue and that queue decues it whenever the framework people starts clicking it and it is two option whether to go step by step or all at once when the user wants to go for all at once or step by step the he can he or she can see the output and again, the user's two options, whether to go for the next, next instruction or to terminate the application. Now, I, would to, I want to tell, I want to call Srivasan to explain something about framework. Uh, when we started with the framework, we just had two basic objectives. First one was to handle the user interaction. That is how the user is going to interact with the system. And the second one was to, you know, integrate the different components of the system. For this uh, first objective, we just went with something that will be familiar to school students. So we went with your basic uh, window, like a window application with its menu bar, and we also had panel-like structures that could be resized accordingly. And uh, we also have a text editor that can, uh, you know, get user input or open an existing file. And obviously, as with any text editor, we have the uh, basic editing operations: cut, copy, paste, undo, uh, redo, etc. And uh, this framework is not just for the project that you've done now. That is, it provides room for, you know, further uh, improvement. That is, uh, we have provided a separate panel which can then uh, display the variables that are currently uh, currently in use, the variables that have been initialized that have values. So uh, these are the uh, well, framework, this is the framework that you saw earlier. Uh, we have the menu bar, the text editor, and uh, the other panels which can be resized as needed. So uh, uh, this was how the first part of our objective was met. And uh, the second part, integration, we handled uh, differently. Uh, what we did was, before passing it to the parser, the parser that we have is a single statement parser. It will take a single uh, C statement as a string and give you a, it will generate a set of intermediate commands for it. 
So uh, before we have to solve it, I mean, people have different coding styles, right? Even people from different schools, different colleges, they have they have, they have different ways of writing code. So what we do is uh, when they get when we get code, we just pass it and make it into single uh, C statements, which are then given to the parser. Uh, the parser then uh, takes uh, takes this input and generates intermediate commands, which are put in a queue. This queue is then later accessed by the uh, framework when the execute button is pressed and it then calls upon the uh, GVM to execute those instructions. Uh, we feel that there is always room for improvement in anything. Uh, in any user interface, there is always the option of a better look and feel. And as I said earlier, we hope that we can display the value of variables after each step, display the program counters for, you know, uh, if, we, if we happen to implement assembly languages, that will be very useful, displaying the program counter. And we would also like to provide the option of downloading a code directly from the internet. That is, you see a code, that is some web page, there is some code, and we would like to provide the option of, uh, you know, downloading it directly. Uh, next, we'll move on to the parser. The parser we have right now is a uh, hard-coded parser that it simulates the uh, uh, behavior of an actual parser. The actual parser is under, still under construction. We hope to be able to complete it soon. And uh, this parser, it has a set of uh, uh, 30 to 40 files for which each of its line is known, and it generates the intermediate commands. These intermediate commands are then put in a queue, which will later be taken and executed by the framework. And uh, the path we have now, uh, we'd like to add, uh, these functionalities have not been implemented as of yet. Array implementation, user-defined functions, pointer implementation, file handling, and handling user input directly. I would like to call upon Shobat to explain the uh, intermediate code language and how it's being implemented. So as you have been familiar with how uh, our, uh, how our uh, framework passes the commands in the queue, and then it has a got an execute button to execute the commands in the GVM, okay, right? So you must be wondering like how the source code is being converted and how the graphics is uh, interpreting the source code. So the source code, what, it uh, what intermediate language has got to do with it is, it has got some five commands called display. To display the strings, the uh, I'm, uh, I guess you have seen that black screen appearing on the above of the Dumbo. It's used to display the code line of the commands. Then you have got a label command, the box for being labeled. This uh, this command is for that purpose. You have a command called operation, which performs operations. You have a command called uh, store. Store is basically uh, we have made our architecture in a way that everything which is displayed on the window is an element. Either it be a box, or a register, or an accumulator, or the literals, all the four uh, primitive data types. So we label, uh, so store can be done, so there are like properties of store. You can have a store from uh, box to register, right? You can have a store from accumulator to box. You can have stores from literal to box, literal to register. So these cases are handled by the store command. So to implement these commands in the GVM, now we have got two registers, which you had seen, R1, R2. We have got an accumulator to store the results. Then you have got memory boxes, which have been, uh, we have tried to make it visualize that it's an infinite memory, because once you are working with the actual machine, you don't know how much memory is there. We have tried working with it. Then uh, there's a cache. Cache is for basically when you're going with complex operations, there is a need to st store the intermediate results, right? So here you can store the intermediate results in the cache, fetch it back in the registers as and when required, and then you can uh, get the result in the accumulator, store it, box in, uh, store it back into the box. Now, what graphics features we have is box is intelligent. What I mean is with box is intelligent is that box has got a data type, right? Box has got a data type as in all the four uh, primitive data types of integer, char, uh, then you got float, double, so if you try to store a float in an integer in the box, box takes care that the value is truncated and the value is put as an integer. If you try to put a float, uh, if you try to put a character in an integer, it's, uh, it's seen that it's again converted into integer and then it's saved. So box is intelligent and uh, since, is, uh, so, so if you go with any other language, like suppose in future you are implementing basic or something else, you can always work with that. Next, uh, how did we do, uh, do the graphics? So for the graphic uh, graphics things, we have created you models in Python. To other people, Mayank. 
concentrate on the presentation. So the models like the boxes, the Dumbo itself, the Dumbo itself and all the instances like accumulator registers, it's not been drawn in libgdx, it's been created in Blender and then coded into this because draw, drawing it with libgdx is difficult. Next we have dynamic text generation, had you had seen like uh, the te uh, text was generating as you were executing the command, so that's a text dynamic text generation. You have translation of elements as in Dumbo moves. That's the main animation part of libgdx to uh, perform that. For the future thing, we are thinking that implementation of infinite memory for the present thing is, it's just an image, it's an illusion that you're getting an infinite memory. In future, what we think is, when you have a large program, and suppose 30 boxes are filled, Dumbo moves forward, it, the field should come as the things have been replicated again. So that's a point. Then we have a stack implementation. Cache, the, uh, we have not implemented cache as in right now graphically, so there they can be an improvement on that. Cache can be listed there and then the values can be put into the cache once there is a complex expression. Then uh, we are thinking of, because pointers are subject to be most uh, tough for anyone when you are learning a C language, pointers are supposed to be most confusing. So we think of implementing pointers and get a feel of it. How is it done? That is. The challenges faced uh, while doing the graphics, uh, while doing all this project was the, as emphasized by our mentor, the intermediate code language was the heart of our system. Once we defined that, every module was independent and could work accordingly to that. Dynamic text generation was definitely a challenge. We had, uh, now the thing was, our thing has to be supported on every platform. It has to be supported on Linux, Windows, Android. Uh, the Android thing is also working, so that was a challenge. Integrating all the modules, we had four modules, different people were working on different modules, so there, there was a challenge that you have to integrate once you are coming up with the full project. Then there is a cross-platform support integrated with that. I would like to call Abhishek again to give you a conclusion. So the conclusion is that you have such a great project and this will help students to know how actually the memory internals are used on the back side of the computer and how actually the stack and memory is implemented. Whenever you run a programming language, how, how the programming language gets executed on the back side and when is stack used, how is arith arithmetic operation takes place, all these can be seen through our graphics in our project. And the second one is, it has a modularity, we have four modules, so each module is independent of each other. So whenever you change one module, it doesn't affect the other module, so which means it, it, it is effective and so it is effective you can change you can advance one module and you can integrate with the other one and third one is that it is a, it, as it is a long term vision program so so whenever you want to you want to change program you so the students of of the young generation will have the knowledge of of, of our the back end not only about the front end so they will be have more knowledge that how actually the program is getting executed on the back side and so they will have better knowledge so they can do perform better programming now i would like to give you some demo how actually the graphics are being implemented so i would like to call divyashree to give a demo about it now this is the second Second demo, here we are basically showing the typecasting, that's an intelligent box thing. The first execution it gets is, बहुत ब्लड आ रही है स्क्रॉल द स्क्रॉल इट अप मूव इट अप ओके हियर वी गेट्स द फर्स्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन इंट ए बी इक्वल्स टू फाइव अगेन इट विल डू द सेम थिंग दैट्स इट विल लेबल द बॉक्स विथ ए बी एंड गिव इट द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइव Now the second instruction we get is int c is equals to 0 0.101 
and D equals 7.5. But here we have the problem that 0 0.101 and 7.5, none of them is integer type. So it typecasts 0 0.101 to 0 and gives to C and 7.5 and it gives to D. That's the value of 7. Now the third line executes is float fi is equals to 90 and gi equals to 8.8. .8. So it labels fi, gives the value of 90.0, that's the float type, to fi. And then again labels gi and gives the value of 8.8, .8. that's also the float type. Then the fourth execution instruct, in, uh, instruction executed, char sg equals to h. Now it as it's a character type, it will automatically send h to the sg box. Now second we get char h equals to 45. So now it will con convert 45 minutes. from its ASCII, ASCII value to my, minus and give it to h. The next instruction float y is equals to 5.890. It will take the value of 4.89, that's float, 0 is neglected. Then int f is equals to hi. Now uh, any integer type can't accept the single quote hi. So it gives to f any garbage value, that's not the actual value. So here it gives any garbage value. Then it gets char ghi. Now again, char ghi is not a character type. So what it does, that it just extracts the last character from the string and then it gives to the box. Each one of those, okay, which was simply, I think, labeling integer a semicolon, how a box gets labeled. And I think it was uh, a is equal to 5 and y is equal to a plus 2. Okay, so box gets a value, value is picked up, operation is done and shown. Two demonstrations which were liked by I think his first computer class, okay, and each one of them took two weeks to build, okay, by a graphics designer. Okay, that time itself I, I told him it is not correct, you should have a dynamic thing where a user types anything, it should show it graphically. Now the secret is, I did not float this for the last couple of years, okay? That is because it involved too much work on my part to make it a success, okay? Because I wanted to actually do a portion of the parser, okay? And do the design and get the implementation done from uh, interns. Now this year, we had a lot of interns and very few projects. So at the last minute, I said, let me float this, okay? So basically, without doing my part of the work, okay? But this is the most complex project, okay? So I think this team has done a good job to reach where they have. They still have to do a lot of work. I don't want to let them go without completing the work, okay? Uh, that's what I think they have given up, but that's fine. I literally threw them to the wolves, okay? It took four weeks for them to settle down and to define the problem, okay? There's one more thing which is very peculiar to me, okay? I like people to fail, okay? I definitely like people to fail, okay? And I do not like people to hide that they have failed. Failure is the greatest learning experience you can do, okay? The smart people learn from other people's mistakes also. So it's not necessary that you fail. You watch others fail and learn, that is the best policy, but sometimes you can also fail. So anyway, I think you've done a reasonable job, but complete all the things that you're supposed to do.